Hey, have you ever wondered what you need to look for when purchasing a TV? Well, let me give you an example. Back in the day, when we drove around the city, every house had an antenna on top of the roof, and you went inside the house and there was one TV. When you wanted to watch TV, you got up off the sofa, you turned the TV on, you changed the channel, adjust the volume, sat down, when that show was over, you got back up off the sofa, sofa uh, change the channel, adjust the volume again, sat back down, etc. Well, nowadays things are a little bit more complicated. For example, back then, all TVs were picture tube TVs, and since they don't make those anymore, you have to decide, do I want plasma, or do I want LCD, or LED, which is basically an LCD TV with LED backlighting. Also, do I want 2D or 3D? And 3D is the future of television, yet you need to have 3D glasses, plus you need to have 3D content. And what I mean by that is if you want to watch a 3D movie, for example, on your 3D TV, you've got to have first a 3D TV, you've got to have a Blu-ray DVD player capable of playing a 3D disc, and you need to have a 3D disc itself to play. So if you have all those, great picture. However, there's not much 3D content out there, though it's growing every day. You might liken it to when you first bought your high definition TV, say four or five years ago, there wasn't much high definition content on there and the picture looked pretty bad. Now more programming is available in high definition and it looks pretty good. One other way of looking at it is say you bought a high performance sports car uh, and it took premium gas, but the city you live in doesn't offer premium gas, just regular. Well, the car will run, but it won't run at its peak and the same as with a 3D TV, you need 3D content in order for it get to get the most uh, out of your purchase. Another thing too, and to future proof your TV or make it so it doesn't go obsolete as you walk out the door, is you want to make sure it's internet capable. In other words, you all have wireless laptops. You sit down, you go anywhere in the house and log on to the internet. Well, TVs now have pretty much become computers and they have internet capabilities built in, which means you can surf the internet uh, if you want. You can watch TV or you can watch streaming audio and video, say Netflix for example, over the TV. Also, you want to make sure that if you do want to do this, see what applications or apps come with your TV. Skype is my personal favorite. Uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar with Skype, if you remember Jane and George Jetson back on the TV show The Jetsons, they sat down in front of a TV and they could see each other as well as talk to each other. That's pretty much what Skype does and this is pretty handy. If you're a grandfather and you happen to have sons and daughters and grandsons in other cities, you can sit down in front of your TV and view your children. And the only thing you need to do to make it happen is it's got to be internet capable, plus you need to put a webcam on the TV. So that's something to consider. And finally, what brand of TV do you buy? There's so many of them out there today. We live in a global economy. Well, the majority of TVs come from Japan, Korea, and China. And so again, whichever one gives you the best picture quality is the one you probably want to choose. However, the price is something else. Again, you get what you pay for. The more you pay for TV, normally the more features and the better picture you get. And finally, you want to consider service after the sale. Since most retail stores today that sell TVs do not have service departments, you need to find out in the unfortunate event that my TV does break down either during the warranty or after the warranty, who is going to service it. So again, you might want to ask the salesperson that. And these are just some of the things that you want to look for when purchasing a TV.